Hey, this is Jake, and uh, I wanted to show you how to make my famous crock pot pizza. I got the idea for this when I was bored at work, and I was thinking about how no matter what food item you can think of, it seems like there's somebody online that's willing to show you a crock pot version of it. So I thought, like, what could you not possibly make in a crock pot? And I thought, a pizza. Sure enough, there's crock pot pizza recipes, and the pictures actually looked pretty damn good. So I decided to make one a uh, year or two ago and I've always really liked it. So I'm going to show you how. First of all, I don't make my own dough. I try to buy um, a tube of pre-made dough at the store. If you're planning on making your own dough for a pizza, you've probably stumbled upon the wrong videos. So keep trucking, partner. This is A-OK -okay with me and uh, it should be easy to open, but it's usually not. I usually end up kind of taking a steak knife, even once it. Ooh, could have really cut myself there. So don't, don't uh, do this. Um, ooh, there we go. All right. So you got your dough. What I like to do is uh, kind of roll it out, because it'll be curled up. So you can knead this dough up and stuff all you want. You don't have to keep it in its, in its regular form. So if I can put it, ooh, kind of on top of this parchment paper I have made. See, now you can see this parchment paper is going to be, oh man, you know what? I had to spray this down. Oh man. Okay, I'm going to try to spray this down after the fact which is not ideal. Ooh. Okay. If you spray it, if you spray down your crock pot first thing, you don't have to do it later on. But I'm glad I remembered now. Anyway, then it's ready to be topped. I like to do a classic style with uh, starting with the pasta sauce first. I know some people put their toppings under the cheese. You know, it doesn't look as nice in the end, and I think uh, presentation is a big part of it, so I, I top it after the cheese. Next up, cheese. I went with uh, six cheese Italian. Mozzarella, provolone, asiago, parmesan, romano, and fontina, so that's, uh, that's pretty good. A lot of times you see somebody making a pizza, like a professional making a pizza on a video or at Blaze Pizza where they're making it, it'll seem like they don't need much sauce or much cheese. I like a lot of both, so. I mean, I sauce the crust until it's red pretty much all over, and then I do the top until it's white, and that's, if you know how pizzas are actually made, this seems like way too much, but that's, that's how I like it. Well, then you move on to your regular toppings. I thought about being more adventurous tonight, but I decided to go classic pepperoni and uh, jalapeno peppers sliced. It's my favorite, and and it looks nice. Again, you go back to the final presentation. You you want your food to look good. And I actually I usually just get Hormel or something, but I saw these and I got these these uh, really thick sliced pepperonis. So that's. Uh, You'll see you can't really top it all that much, you know. I mean, you can cover it with pepperonis, but it's you're going to have a lot of leftover pepperonis, so. Once you got the pepperonis done, I like to go with the jalapenos. My cat thinks it's cat food. Ah. All right, so we're just gonna toss these in. Be picky, I'm not gonna put any of the ends on because they don't look as nice. They're a little tougher to chew. So you'll see, that's the downfall of this pizza. There's not a ton of real estate for the toppings. So I just try to put a bunch of everything because it's gonna be, when you if you slice this into four slices, they're gonna be thin slices, but, you know, dense. Now, you basically wanna plug this in, put the lid on, low heat for about two hours. 
Yeah, it takes about two hours, which is which is quite a while to wait for pizza when you could order one or, or pick one up or make a frozen pizza or do it, it, it literally any other method than this. You'll have it faster than two hours. But to me, it is worth it because this is a really good style of pizza that I really like and, you know, plan on making it when you get home from work. Then you're done, chill back for a couple hours, um, and then you're ready to dig in later on. So, you know, you got to kind of plan your night around it, but but it is good. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, about two hours, you can keep checking in on it on a low heat. So another thing I want to do while the pizza is cooking was make a quick drink. Um, pizza's Italian, decided to make an Italian cocktail, uh, the Negroni. One of my favorite uh, aperitifs is Campari. It's Italian. It's uh, I think it's made with um, grapefruit peel. It's very bitter. There's a sweetness to it, but it's kind of overpowered by the bitterness, at least at first, if you're not familiar with it. And the Negroni is equal parts Campari, gin, which I got some Finn's gin, which I've never had. It's made here in Chicago. And some sweet vermouth. I picked up Martini and Rossi sweet vermouth. So equal parts. First off, I'm going to uh, just pour myself a jigger of vermouth. a jigger of Campari and a jigger of gin all three of those I have now in my mixer, so I'm going to give that a stir. And that's really all there is to it. I'm going to strain this into my cocktail glass here. Beautiful. Oh, and a little bit of orange. Got my blood orange that I picked up today. Got a paring knife. Just gonna slice off a little quarter sized piece of this. And then I'm going to squeeze that orange side down into the drink. I'm gonna rub the rim with it. Then I'm gonna place it in there and uh, all right. Very good. And now we're going to sip on this and soon the wonderful aroma of homemade pizza is going to fill the air. All right. Welcome back. It's been about two hours. Uh, I'm on my uh, third Negroni over here and I'm ready to see what this pizza is all about. So unplug my crock pot, get the lid off. And we're going to see how well this um, parchment paper handles work. Let's check it out. All right, so here it is. Pretty good looking pizza. Um, you know, thick, like I said. All right, so I'm going to try to give this sucker a cut. All right, so this is it. Uh, nice, big, thick slice of pie and a perfect drink to pair with. Thanks for checking it out. Sound off in the comments if you made this pizza at home. And, uh, oh, you can, also, you can also put cornmeal on the bottom to give a better crust to the texture. I didn't have any cornmeal and it was gonna be too much room for my backpack, too much real estate to carry home from work, so uh, just went with uh, standard crust, but if you do want to do some cornmeal, I would sprinkle it on right after you oil the bottom of the pan, and then uh, bon appetit!